Okay, in this video I want to discuss why vectors are useful. Uh, before I continue on that, what I'm going to do is just do a very quick recap on what a vector is. A vector is something with both magnitude and it's got a direction. So what is a magnitude? That is the number associated with it. So for example, you might be 5 meters tall or it might be 10 miles long or you might be 70 kilos heavy and direction would be something like 70 degrees north it might be east or it could be at 30 degrees um, 30 degrees against the x-axis alright so it's something with both magnitude and direction and the way you draw a vector the way you draw a vector is by a line in its direction with the arrow pointing which direction it's going and the length of it being its magnitude so if something is five meters long you will break this into one two three four five and you'll see each unit uh, each unit represents a meter so this would be a vector of five units or five meters long and if you said that this is 30 degrees here it would be five meters long at 30 degrees um, north of east. Alright, so that's just a quick recap into what vectors are. Now, why are they useful? They are useful because vectors can represent lots of things. They can represent, for example, forces, velocities, and so on. And because people, mathematicians, physicists, engineers, and all that, those sorts of people deal with things like forces, velocities, uh, weights and all that sort of thing then vectors are useful so what they can do is because we're able to add vectors and get an overall resultant vector so say for example I, if I had the vector A and the vector B and I wanted to find out what would happen if I applied vectors A and B at the same time then all you do really is add them by putting the tail of B and the head of A and drawing a resultant from the tail of B to the head of uh, tail of A to the head of B so this vector here would be a plus b and I've discussed this in another video and the point here is that the vector a plus b is equivalent to doing a and then b so basically I can get rid of these two vectors and just by applying this single vector here it's the same as applying the other two vectors so if I have lots of different vectors if I have a million different vectors then I'll get the resultant vector of these a million vectors and that is the same as applying all of them together so I'm going to give a very quick and um, I suppose trivial example. If I had a man, and this man has a weight, and say his weight is in this direction and it is 100 units. All right, so I won't talk about you know whether it's kilograms or whatever it is. Just let's say 100 units, and say he has a another force going this direction, and that's also 100 units. So, well, what would be the overall result of this? Well, it would be 100 units this way, plus 100 units this way, giving me zero units. So the man will stay still. However, what happens if there was a wind blowing? And the wind was blowing this way at 30 units. Alright? And that there was another wind blowing... Blowing... I don't know, we'll say in the opposite direction again. And this wind is blowing with 100 units. Uh, we'll say 200 units. So the question is, what will happen to the man? Well, you would add all the vectors together. You would say, the vector, we'll call this one A, B, C, and D. Now, of course, it doesn't matter what order you add the vectors. Oh, excuse me. It doesn't matter what order you add the vectors. All that matters is that you add them. So, of course, I could say, I could add this vector A, and then straight on to add B and get zero. But just for clarity, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to add A plus C plus D. So that was 30 units. This might be D plus B. All right, now, of course, these two vectors should be on top of each other. And I drew them like that for just for clarity. So what's the resultant vector? The resultant vector is drawn from the tail of the first to the head of the second. So this, will say, should actually come to about here. 
and you see the actual resultant vector is pushing the man to the right okay which is exactly what you'd expect because we said here that B and A don't affect him C is going to the left by 30 units and D is going to the right by 200 units so D essentially has 170 units this direction here that's the overall result so the point is anyway that by representing quantities as vectors you're able to add all the vectors together and get the overall picture as to what's happening and that's the reason vectors are useful thanks for watching please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel